So the second half of our lesson two for KBL Physique is developing the strength and the control to do the press. So this is sometimes a little bit uh, more nerving for people, but uh, it's an important part. It's a great big accomplishment. You'd be proud of yourself once you get this one down. It's a fundamental part of kettlebell training, and so we're gonna do it, okay? So here we go. Um, I'm gonna give you guys an easy way to start your pressing in case you are stuck with a heavy kettlebell. I'd like you to be stuck with a kettle heavy kettlebell, so I'm gonna show you how you can use it. So remember, anytime you are challenged by your weight, you always have two ends. It is a beginner movement, but you know what? It does work. So if you wanna start someplace easy, everything you see me do now, you can do with two hands, okay? So if I press with two hands, my goal is to get that weight over my hips, okay? That's what I'm trying to get it for. I always want to find that shelf, and that's where I'm going to hold the weight, and I'm trying to get as close as I can to a locked out position. When I pull it down, I want to keep my elbows inside my shoulders and bring it back to my shelf. Up over my head to my shelf. Over my head to my shelf. Now, something I would have liked to have noticed um, I want you to keep this in important, is that I want you to press always from your hips, never from your arms, okay? Technically, what we're doing is a jerk, but that's not important for our stuff. Hips up, hips down. Hips up, hips down, okay? So that is how you can use two hands if you're gonna work your kettlebell pressing technique um, and you have a weight that you're not comfortable with one hand yet. But part of your growth process is to get comfortable with one hand. So we go thumb corner in the corner. We got our second hand on. We're gonna roll it to our chest. And remember, we're gonna get your wrist nice and straight, your elbows in tight. You're gonna use your hips. So our first step is hips up over the head. And I want you to learn just how to hold the weight in this position. When you look up, your wrist should be, your wrist should be straight elbow should be straight, and your shoulder should be locked in tight to your body, okay? And you're just gonna try different versions of walking. I'll make you walk a couple of steps forward. I'll make you walk a couple of steps backwards. Sometimes I'll make you shuffle to the side. Sometimes I'll make you shuffle back to the side. But everything that's happening is, I'm having you hold the weight over your head for as long as you can, because I want you to isometrically learn how to get the tension, how to control, and how to do this position. <laughs> so that's step one, learning how to control it up over your head. The second step is learning the path to bring it down. When you're pulling the weight down, act like you're doing a closed grip pull down. You're gonna grab the weight and you're gonna pull it <laughs> right into your chest, into that rack position. You're gonna catch it on your hips. Hips come up, pull it down. Okay? See it from the side. Hips come up. Notice my arm stays perpendicular to the floor. The weight doesn't touch me until it's ready to catch my hips. Hips come up. Pull, pull, pull. Catch it down. Okay? Those are the two fundamental things you want to get down in terms of learning how to press efficiently and effectively. And so what you'll see, we'll call it the overhead walk, where you're gonna keep it up over your head, you're gonna learn to stabilize with that one arm, and you're gonna move under control. And then the second thing I'm gonna have you focus on is that negative pull. And the negative pull is gonna help you develop the correct path to bring the kettlebell down to your chest. You gotta remember, when you've been pressing your dumbbells for most of this time, your pressing has been all the way out here, and you have this big arching movement, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Your dumbbells are great for that, but just like everything we said, it's a movement pattern, and I need you to learn a different movement pattern. And so this negative motion will help you learn the correct movement pattern, which is gonna make it easier for you to do your K-Bell training more effectively.